There is no room for error. This is now up to Super Hard Crew. Gentlemen, and welcome back to our super week full of matches of the teams in the European LCS Battle It Out. I'm Joe Miller along with Trevor Quickshot Henry, and we're coming to you live from our studios in Cologne, Germany. And we've got five terrific games coming your way today. Yeah, that is right, Joe. And what a super week it has already been. I really feel like we've got a sample of some of the best games that these teams have been able to give us. And I sincerely hope for more action packed matches today. I'm feeling it. I think we're going to get them, Trevor, that's for sure. Let's take a quick look at the highlights from yesterday's match. Matches, though. The first thing that we want to talk about is Gambit going two for zero. They picked apart SK Gaming and then defeated the Copenhagen Wolves. Both games were very chaotic and generally they all ran at Gambit speed. Yeah, I, th I definitely think that Gambit set the tempo of both of those games. Against SK at the start of the day, they ran a smart combination of Aatrox and LeBlanc. It allowed them to control SK. Then in the second game of the day, the Wolves let Cassidy through. It wasn't entirely Cassidy that won them the game, but it definitely helped. And the phenomenal thing wasn't really that Cassidy won a game, but it was that he got let through a second time in a row straight after that one. Alliance got to play the Purple People Eater for the second time in the day. Yeah, so Alex had a good game on Cassidy. He dealt with the lane swap well, came into the mid game fairly strong. Froggen did it even better. He scaled very well into the late game, and both Alex and Froggen ran that sort of default flash and teleport, and they really forced their opponents to work around Cassidy. Those two games serve as a very good reminder as to why Cassidy is banned so frequently. <laughs> Now, for you guys at home, if you do keep up to date on Reddit and you read about the changes on the PBE, you might be aware that there are tweaks to Cassidy's kit in the works. So, some of the numbers will change and we'll see if the pros are still going to play him. And Alliance not only got their hands on Cassidy, but they closed the game out and secured their third win of Super Week. Alliance are now the only team that can secure a perfect Super Week. That is, if they win against Gambit here today. Yeah, now Alliance have played very solidly in all three of their games. They've played patiently, relatively risk-free. They're executing each of their team compositions exquisitely. I think Alliance, they're climbing themselves up the ranks and at an absolutely perfect time. They still have one more game and look to be the team that will benefit the most this week. And with so many games in a super week, that means even more hashtag LCS big plays. First up was Gambit versus SK Gaming and Diamonds Lee Sin. This one came in from at Wolfrat1625 and he said, that Lee Sin turnaround by Diamond after the tower dive for Darian Swaglord Aatrox got Gambit rolling. Epic game and it certainly was. This was your third most talked about play. They're going to go for it. Dominus is available. They're going to tank it out. There's the Dominus being used up. He's tanking it for a long time. That's a quick Bloodwell pop. Svenskeren comes back around. He's going to pop back up and try and jump away. Is he going to be able to do it, though? Svenskeren can't take the turret. There's a lot of damage on Svenskeren coming out from that turret, and they don't get him. Here comes Diamond. He's going to try and track around the side. Flash, he's got the Sonic Wave and takes him down a range. Punts Freddy back in there, and now Freddy's in trouble. Darian didn't really read the play. I don't think he was expecting this to work out so well, but Diamond Brock proved the king of the jungle is still alive on Lee Sin. Diamond Prox on his signature champion. The thing I love most about that is hearing the crowd once again cheering for the play. It was brilliant. Yeah. The next one came to us courtesy of the Fnatic versus Millennium game with Yellowstar and Reckless's huge outplay in that bottom lane. It was at the real TZT and sent this one in. He says that teamwork from Reckless and Yellowstar and that flash into Dark Binding. This was your second big play. Now they're going on towards Reckless in the bottom lane. Yellow Star going to ulti. The call in comes out. Creatson gets stunned up, uses the barrier and the flash to get away. Whoa. But Yellow Star flashes in, lands the binding. They get the kill. Reckless has to use his barrier. Flashes to the backside. He's going to go down. Is he? No! Wow. He's not. He's, he's alright. Barely there and picks up a double. 
Reckless leveling up there with the kill that actually saved his life in the end. Brilliant stuff from that game. And then there was that Alliance versus Rockat kick on Varus into Thresh. At John Entran, put it pretty simply and with just two words summed it up perfectly, that kick. This was your most talked about moment in the European LCS. Don't actually know if they really saw each other there, but the Q's gonna land. There's oh. the kick oh, into the hook. It doesn't get much better than that, I'm afraid. There is nothing more that I can add other than that kick indeed. For you guys at home, you can keep sending your big plays our way on Twitter at LOL Esports and tag them with that hashtag LCS Big Plays. Now let's take a look where the teams ended up in the table after yesterday's six games. Starting at the very top with Gambit Gaming. They are now atop of everyone with 12 wins, 7 losses. Followed closely though by Rockat at 11 for 8. Then we have SK Gaming in third place with 10 wins, 8 losses. Fnatic just behind them with one loss more. That table is incredibly tight. There is a tie now in fifth place between the Copenhagen Wolves and the Surging Alliance at 9 and 10. Seventh position is being held by the Super Hot Crew at 8 and 10, and way off the pace in 8th position is Millennium at 6 and 13. Now here are the teams that will be battling it out today. We'll begin things with Alliance versus Gambit. Great game that promises to be. And then SK Gaming taking on Rocket. Yeah, we then move into Millennium versus the Super Hot Crew. We have yet another El Clasico between Fnatic and SK Gaming. And our fifth match features the Super Hot Crew taking on the Copenhagen Wolves. Immediately following the LCS, the European Challenger Series continues with their quarterfinals, and it's going to be Orsomniac versus Steve's, Steve Bakes Cookies. Best name ever. Remember, you guys can follow along with all of these matches over on lolesports.com, where you can find player stats, VODs of past games, the schedule, the standings, and much more. You can also vote for the teams you think will win throughout today's games. Yeah, just click the schedule link and then click on your picks. We'll check in before each match to see who you have chosen to win. While you're there, find out how to join us here in the studio in Cologne to watch the LCS live and in person. Just click the tickets for all the information you need to know. Now we'd like to use some of your collective brain power on Twitter to tell us which position and pro do you feel is having the biggest impact in the European LCS this split and why? So I always answer these questions and I'm going to stick with a jungler in my opinion. I think when you think about players that have a big impact like Jankos, Amazing, Impaler, Shook, They've had such a big game-changing moment for their teams at different points in the split. You guys at home, you can share your answers with us by tweeting at LOL Esports. And for this one, use the hashtag LCS. We'll pick out our favorites and read them later on the air. Well, let's send it over to Shox, who is standing by with two of the top supports in the league right now. Thank you very much, Joe, and quick shot. I'm Eve Shishok Zaportre here with SK Gaming's and Rated and Vander from Rockat. Of course, you guys have a game coming up here, the second game of the day. First, I want to track back to yesterday, maybe starting with SK Gaming, currently one on one in the Super Week. Yesterday versus Gambit, though, that loss, I didn't feel that you guys were doing particularly bad in the bottom lane. Where do you think it went wrong for the team? Well, it has several reasons. I think we got smarted, uh, outsmarted there. Um, our picks were not on point, and we saw LeBlanc early, but we kind of knew what we wanted to play set against it, but I don't know why, but it was not in our minds until we had that last pick and the setup was not really like formed around it. And that kind of lost us the game in the end because we couldn't really out-rotate them and split push was not an option either. They had a picky comp and I don't know, like overall it was just the picks that made it harder for us and we didn't execute it very well. Talking about having a clear mind in picks and bans, Vander, you guys yesterday played versus Alliance. The first thing I want to ask is, of course, 380 carry bans. Very interesting strategy there. What was the plan? So our plan was to let them first pick Kassadin and pick the strongest AD, which is like we fought Varus at the moment, and we'll be able to counter the vein pick. So we were afraid of Draven and two other we banned, I think Jinx and Sivir, because yeah. they are the most played champions that Taps is currently playing. But in the past we knew he was playing Vayne. We hoped he will be a bit off as uh, this champion, but he proved he did, played well. Do you feel he was the biggest problem in the end, or was it that Cassidy threat, or was it not a, not a problem at all? I think Cassidy is always a threat because you have to do something before he starts rolling in the late game. But if I think if we played better, we could win. All right, so you guys obviously have the game coming up versus each other here. Second game of the day. And Rated, how do you feel going up against Rockad's bottom lane? Well, we have a good win ratio versus them so far. We haven't lost a match in LCS. But I think we need to respect them because they're one of the upper teams here in LCS. 
And I think they are a big threat, and when you let them roll, they will roll you down. So we have to manage to keep the early game under our control, and at a certain point, I think we will pull ahead. Yeah, that early game has been kind of an issue for you guys as well. How do you think it's going to go versus Candy Panda and, and Rated? I think it should be fine when it comes to 2v2, but I'm more scared when it comes to jungle presence on the bot lane. I think our lane doesn't work that good with Yankos yet, but uh, we're work working on it. And about early game, I think we improved it a lot, last games, but we, now we do like mistakes in, uh, later in the game. You mentioned that Yankos and the synergy with the bottom lane. I had the impression that that was there in the beginning when you guys were winning so many games. Did that change or? I know, I think we just play a bit worse now. Like, it happens to like almost every team. You can see at Fnatic, for example. So I think we will manage to come back. All right, well, he's mentioning Fnatic, and that's your second match of the day, SK versus Fnatic El Clasico. How are you going into that one? Well, we've prepared very well, so we just go into the match and go through with our plan. And whatever we're doing, if it works, it works. If it doesn't work, we have to adjust some way. You want to ruin the, um, excuse me, I was going to say Alliance, but that's a dream of South Fanatic, obviously. Coming into this weekend, you guys were named as maybe one of the best teams at the moment. You haven't quite lived up to it, but still one and one for now is not a bad score at all. How do you feel you've done overall in the last couple of weeks? I think the last weeks were a lot better for us. We've improved as a team and overall we've showed even in the standings that we can compete on the highest level. And I think if we just keep doing what we're doing and prepare for every match, I think we will do good and keep doing good. Okay, what is the game plan for Rocket going into the next week? The end of the split is closing in. Well, now it's uh, one week break, so we'll work hard to come back to our form from the earlier of the split. So yeah, we just have to not give up and keep our hearts high. All right, so um, the first game coming up for obviously is Alliance as they take on Gambit. Alliance can go for that perfect streak. Do you think they have a chance in Rated? I think every team has a chance right now. Um, Alliance played very strong this week. Gambit is a really solid team as well, and the way they played was us yesterday it was impressive. I think overall I would give it to Gambit right now, just because they've been performing a lot better like throughout the whole split so far. But I think Alliance have a shot, and if they can take it. Fander, what do you think? I think Alliance will take it. All right. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Good luck in your matchup, the second match of the day, that is. As for us, we need to take a quick moment to farm our lane. But stay with us, because the first match of the day featuring Alliance versus Gambit is just around the corner. We'll be right back.
back to the European LCS, everyone. It's time for Alliance versus Gambit. This is the second time that these two teams have met in the LCS so far. The score sitting at 1-0 to zero in favor of Gambit. Yeah, now Alliance lost to Gambit after being picked apart by Alex and Karzix and Genji on Jinx. But truthfully, it was very, very early on in the split, and all of the problems that plagued Alliance back then have mostly been resolved. Yeah, that's right. Alliance have already secured three wins this week, taking down the Super Hot Crew, the Copenhagen Wolves, and Rockat. In their games, we've seen a much more patient and controlled Alliance team playing their compositions well and never really looking close to losing any of those three games. Yeah, I think Alliance have found consistency in their map movements and their objective battles during Super Week. The patient control play is working because of the compositions that they're running. And I actually want to talk about some of the champions that Alliance have run this week that stand out in my mind. I'm going to pick one per lane starting in the top lane. So let's take a look at Irelia for Wicked. He has played it twice, both games yesterday. He's only given up one death, averages 342 CS per game. He's had very good games on Irelia this split. And don't forget, he also beat Renekton with a trundle on day one, which is very impressive. Next up, let's talk about Shook. He stepped it up in the last three weeks. He got his hands on Elise yesterday. He had a fantastic performance going unkilled, securing four kills, getting five assists, and he's generally been a much more positive impact for his team. Cassidy was let through in the mid lane. Froggen got to play LeBlanc and Nidalee before, but his Cassidy was superb. He was involved in 13 out of his team's 17 kills. It's a very, very good kill participation. Now, Tabs, he's played Caitlyn twice this week already. He's made his opponents pay for it. He's got 9, 2, and 12 stats. And his great positioning at all stages of the game is very good. Again, in contrast to what was happening earlier in the split. He's also working very well with Nif in, uh, during the laning phase. And let's very quickly talk about Nif. He's played Thresh in all three games. He's been fantastic. If you compare Nif's Thresh games from early in the split to this week, you might think they were different players. Nif has been landing hook after hook, helping his team to their current undefeated record, and he's got an incredible 83% kill participation. That is a very scary champion for him to be on. Yeah, Gambit are also looking very good, though. They're two wins and one loss on Super Week, and in all three games, they've looked very, very strong. They seem to have a slow start, but in all three games, they've bounced back in the mid-game, found themselves kills, and generally created chaotic, exciting games to watch. Yeah, I think Gambit just once again showed a fairly slow laning phase. They're not necessarily losing anymore. They're not giving up early first bloods as often as they did at the beginning of the split. And right now, they're holding their own more frequently. If you look at some CS numbers to compare it, Genja is in the middle of the table with 71 average CS at 10 minutes, then 166 average CS at 20 minutes. It's not the best, it's not the worst. In addition to the laning going better, Gambit have also had some fun with some different picks. They ran uh, Aatrox in the top lane, Wukong in the jungle. They also got their hands on Casted in the mid lane. And I just feel like in general, Gambit are performing pretty well. I'm excited to see how they deal with the very informal alliance in today's game. So let's check out the teams for this one, starting on the blue side with Alliance. They are, of course, Wicked in the top lane, Shook in the jungle, Froggen in the mid lane, the duo of Tabs and Nif. And of course, on the red side, it is Gambit Gaming. Darian is up top, Diamond is in the jungle, Alex is in the mid lane, Genja, AD carry, and Edward in support. And definitely, definitely sounds like he's got some crowd support here today. Yeah, and we've got a full house here once again. And, uh, well, it's no real surprise if they've been watching the games over the last few days. There's certainly something that you want to see live. And you guys can still get tickets if you head over to lolliesports.com. Check that out. Uh, but we're moving into the champion select phase here. What are we expecting from these two teams? Where are the crossovers? So, Cassidy's going to be banned. Yeah, that's that. I, I, if Cassidy goes through again, I'll eat my hat if it I was, had one. It was Froggen and Alex that got to play it, so it's quite interesting that the two players that got their hands on Castan are facing off in the mid lane. I feel like LeBlanc is a definite ban as well. We've yeah. seen Alex and Froggen doing very, very well. I feel like in this matchup, we may see some more mid lane focus bans than in the other lanes. You also have to consider the likes of Elise. Shook has played it uh, yesterday. You know, Diamond has picked it up in the past as well. So it is a consideration. Well, we are going to head into Champion Select and find out exactly what these teams are going to be banning and maybe even more importantly, picking coming into this game. We can see straight out of the gates there, Evelyn and Cassidy taken away. Cassidy banned. What a surprise. Somehow they forgot about Cassidy yesterday, but not going to happen two days in a row. No, I think people are definitely going to uh, learn from yesterday's matches. The one thing 
thing about Kastanen is you have to play around him. Even though, you know, yes, he did great yesterday, it's the pressure that it puts on a team. Uh, and we do see the LeBlanc being banned out as well. This time it's going from Alex. What it's leaving up between these two teams is still those farm heavy mid laners. The likes of Gragas, the likes of Ziggs, they are still up there. Motion taken away from Genja as well. So some interesting bands I'm gonna call them yesterday from well between Rocket and Alliance, they went through the entire list of AD carries. That's not gonna be the same here though. Kazakh's banned out by Alliance and again Alexic. He's a great Kazakh player. So Alliance are removing the champions they don't want to face off against. Getting uh, Alex onto a little bit more of a farming champion. He doesn't have these assassins. There's still Zed available. And we have seen Alex playing Zed in the past. We've even seen him on Fizz in, in the last split. It's if he wants to go an assassin route. But what I do like is it's forcing now Gambit to decide, do they ban Elise? Do they leave it open? Because there's a lot of powerful picks that are still up. Elise, Trundle, Thresh, Lulu, for example. And that's where Alliance are going. Yep, Lulu picked up straight away there for Alliance. And let's not forget Lulu. Such versatility that she has right now. We've seen her in the support role in the mid lane, in the top lane as well. So really a lot of versatility on that front. On the other side, we did see Caitlyn as a final ban, which makes me wonder if Tabs is thinking, you know what, I'd love to play Vayne last year. I played Vayne amazingly well yesterday against Rocket. Am I going to go for it again? On his, on the other side, his opposite number is going to have Sivir now locked in there for Gambit. And they're looking forward to that Wukong in the jungle once again. So I'm a little bit surprised at the two AD carry bans. I think that with uh, Genja, he's basically played Lucian or Jinx, and he's picked Jinx into many different compositions. He can also play a, a number of other uh, champions. There's going to be some focus in this bottom lane. I wouldn't be surprised to see Diamond maybe ganking or trying to get involved there. Taking away that Wukong and the Sivir from Alliance is also champions that uh, Alex himself said the, the likes of Karthus, which is still up, uh, the likes of Sivir, Karthus, Wukong, those are champions that Alliance have won with in the past. So it's double duty stealing, stealing those away, denying them from Alliance. What will Alliance go with next here? That Thresh, we mentioned it earlier on, Nif played only Thresh so far uh, in this Super Week. All three of them being wins as well. Funnily enough, before that, he'd not won a game when he played Thresh. Uh, but we are going to see Thresh Draven locked in here for Tabs. And funnily enough, when the Draven got banned yesterday, we were thinking, wow, Draven really against against Tabs? But these guys obviously know something that we hadn't spotted. Yeah, so it, from, from what happened after the games and we were chatting to the players, Alliance was saying, actually, yes, we have been scrimming with Draven. We have been practicing it uh, offline. So this will be the first time we're seeing it in Tabs' hands in the LCS. It is a very aggressive lane. If you can get some stacks of adoration, you want to farm early on. You ideally don't want to go for kills until you can really maximize that gold bonus that you get from Draven. So we'll see uh, how quickly Tabs can, you know, get that early uh, gold stacking up in his favor. What will we see Gambit going for you there? Currently have Irelia and Darian had a big smile on his face. Uh, it'd be interesting to see Darian actually pick that up and go against Wiki, but they've got Aatrox in there, which makes me think that Darian will be playing that there in the top lane, and indeed Genja will switch away to Annie as the support for Edward. Let's not forget Annie, uh, Annie's performance. Edward's performance on Annie yesterday, where he had over 400 AP by the end of the game and actually finished that one 6-2-9 against the Wolves. Yeah, just a few items. Had a Void Staff thrown in there. I think he picked up a, a Twin Shadows right as the game was ending yeah. as well. Really a lot of ability power. What I'm liking from Gambit's composition is they're going to run you down. There is so much mobility in the Wukong, the Aatrox, the Sivir. And when, you know, uh, Annie's going to have that speed buff from Sivir as well. There's going to be a lot of mobility in Gambit's team fighting. I almost expect Gambit to look for early fights as well because of the power of the Aatrox, the Wukong, and the Sivir in positions like the jungle or the dragon pit, for example. It's going to give them a very strong early advantage because of the power of that team fight comp they already have. Seems like we're going to be seeing Irelia once again here for Wicked. And he actually said on Twitter earlier on today, Headed to the studio, we're gonna get basically I'm gonna unpack Aurelia once again and play her all day long. And looks like he's gonna do that here against Gambit. So Aurelia top lane and then the jungler for Shuck will be Lee Sin, a champion, which he's he's provided some highlight moments on this week already. Yes, and I actually think everybody that's played Lee Sin in recent weeks has been phenomenal. Amazing was doing it two weeks ago. We've seen Diamond picking it up, we've seen Shook doing very well with it. Everybody's getting involved. The very interesting thing to me is that Elise has made it completely through this picks and bans. She has not been featured. She has not been played at all. And it doesn't even look like she's a consideration. What are they going to go with for the mid lane? Up against Lulu for Froggen. 
what will Alex Itch have? And it's going to be Kale actually switching through a few of them, but Kale will be picked up here for Alex Itch. Obviously, Kale been played a little bit less here. The last time actually that Gambit played that Kale was against SK Gaming, uh, where they ended up losing. But Alex Itch had a good performance. Like, we know how strong he can be on Kale. Yeah, so this is Kale after the changes. We have seen Kowtard with her in the mid lane. We've seen it in rated playing her in the support role. And I believe this is only the third Kale since the uh, nerfs to her Q. The one thing that it, it is very interesting about the lock-in now is there's still a movement speed increase on her heel. So you've got all of this mobility on the side of Gambit. They quite literally want to run circles around Alliance. Over on the other side of Alliance, you've also got a fair amount of mobility. Draven can move him, uh, get his speed.